Good morning. Hare Krishna. Oh. Okay, since you, uh, uh, good morning devotees. Since Navina refused to give me his bio, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make one up. <laughs> he was born uh, in the Swiss Alps, just like Heidi. Um, and he uh, joined somewhere in the 80s, I believe, right? Yes. And he, because the fashion and the uh, vibrancy of the movement relied heavily on book distribution, he joined the team. At the time, Switzerland was the most uh, powerful country as far as book distribution in the world. And Navina was the champion. Together with his friend Harinamananda, they took turns beating each other's records of how many books one can distribute. So I imagine you must have distributed over a million books, over a million of Prabhupada's books, or maybe more. Um, he's uh, been living in, as you can see now he lives in a van, but he, uh, he used to live in a, in the temple in Zurich and travel around also lived in Mayapur. He actually built a building that is very much appreciated where uh, people like Indra Dhyumna Swami, Niranjana Swami, Shivaram Swami you know, stay and myself as well. He's a very studious person. He has read Prabhupada's books numerous times and he speaks around the world and he's a nice devotee and a good friend of mine so please take it away now did i, miss, krishna. It? Did I miss anything hi krishna Saratma prabhu good to see you all thank you for your kind words you do kirtan or what's the what's the normal uh the normal is usually uh, just start with the verse and uh, synonyms translation purport and okay just yourself if you want to bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya today we're reading from Srimad bhagavatam fourth canto 24th chapter chanting the song sung by lord shiva text number 63 tame ka adya purusha supta shakti staya rajasatva tamo vividyate mahanaham kam marudagni vardara surarshayo bhuta gana idam yataha Tvam, your lordship, ekaha, one, adya, the original, purushaha, person, supta, dormant, shaktihi, energy, taya, by which, raja, the passion energy, sattva, goodness, tamaha, ignorance, vibhidyate, is diversified, mahan, the total material energy, aham, egotism, kam, the sky, marut, the air, agni, fire, vaha, water, Daraha, earth, Sura Rishaya, the demigods and the great sages, Bhuta Ganaha, the living entities, Idam, all this, Yataha, from whom? Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktiranta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Kija. My dear Lord, you are the only Supreme Person, the cause of all causes. Before the creation of this material world, your material energy remains in a dormant condition. When your material energy is agitated, the three qualities, namely goodness, passion, and ignorance, act. And as a result, the total material energy, egotism, ether, air, fire, water, earth, and all the various demigods and saintly persons becomes manifest. Thus, the material world is created. Report. If the whole creation is one, that is nothing but the Supreme Lord or Vishnu, then why do the expert transcendentalists make such categories as are found in the above verse? 
Why do learned and expert scholars distinguish between matter and spirit? In answer to these questions, Lord Shiva says that spirit and matter are not creations of various philosophers, but are manifested by Lord Vishnu, as described in this verse. Tvameka Adya Purushaha. Spiritual and material categories are made possible by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But actually, there are no such distinctions for the living entities who are eternally engaged in the service of the Lord. There is only a material world for those who want to imitate the Lord and become enjoyers. Indeed, the material world is nothing but forgetfulness of the original Supreme Personality of Godhead, the creator of everything. The distinction between matter and spirit is created by the sleeping energy of the Lord when the Lord wants to give some facility to those living entities who want to imitate the Lord in his enjoyment. It is only for them that this material world is created by the dormant energy of the Lord. For instance, sometimes children want to imitate their mother and cook in the kitchen. And at such a time, the mother supplies them with some toys so that the children can imitate her cooking. Similarly, when some of the living entities want to imitate the activities of the Lord, this material cosmic manifestation is created for them by the Lord. The material creation is therefore caused by the Lord through his material energy. It is by the glance of the Lord that the material energy is activated. At that time, the three material qualities are set into motion. And the material energy is manifested first in the form of the Mahatattva, then egotism, then ether, then air, fire, water, and earth. After the creation, the living entities are impregnated in the cosmic manifestation. And they emerge as Lord Brahma and the seven great rishis, then as different demigods. From the demigods come human beings, animals, trees, birds, beasts, and everything else. The original cause, however, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as verified herein, Tameka Adya Purushaha. This is also confirmed in Brahma Sanghita 5.1. Ishvara Parama Krishna Sachidananda Vigraha Anadira Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. Those who are covered by the material energy cannot understand that the origin of everything is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. This is summarized in the Vedanta aphorism, Janmadi Asya Yataha, Vedanta Sutra 112. Krishna also confirms this in Bhagavad Gita, 10th chapter, verse 8. Ahang sarvasya prabhavo mata sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante mam buddha bhava samanvitaha. I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. When Krishna says that he is the origin of everything, aham sarvasya prabhava, he means that he is even the source of Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, the Purusha avatars, the material manifestation, and all the living entities within the material world. Actually, the word prabhava, creation, only refers to this material world. For since the spiritual world is ex eternally existing, there is no question of creation. In the Chatu Shloki of Srimad Bhagavatam, the Lord says, Aham evasam eva gre. I was existing in the beginning before the creation. Srimad Bhagavatam, 2nd Canto, 9th chapter, text 33. In the Vedas, it is also said, Eko Narayana Asit. Before the creation, there was only Narayan. This is also confirmed by Shankaracharya. Narayana Paro Vyaktat. Narayan is transcendental to the creation from Gita Bhashya. Since all the activities of Narayan are spiritual, when Narayan said, Let there be creation, that creation was all spiritual. The material only exists for those who have forgotten that Narayan is the original cause. The verse again. Tame ka adya purusha sapta shakti stvaya raja sattva tamo vibidyate mahan ham kam marudagni vardaraha surar shayo bhuta gana idam yataha. My dear Lord, you're the only supreme person, the cause of all causes. 
before the creation of this material world, your material energy remains in a dormant condition. When your material energy is agitated, the three qualities, namely goodness, passion, and ignorance act. And as a result, the total material energy, egotism, ether, air, fire, water, earth, and all the various demigods and saintly person become manifest. Thus, the material world is created. <clears> oh, <throat> Magyana Timarandasya, Gananjana Shalakaya, Chakshorum Militam Jena, Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha, Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Putale, Svayam Rupa Gedam Hayam Dadati Svapadantikam, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda, Sri Advaita Gedar Har Shiva Sri Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mukam Karoti Vachalam, Pangum Langaite, Girim Yat Kripadam, Aham Vande, Sri Guru Dinataranam, Paramananda Madhavam, Sri Chaitanya Ishwaram, Vanchakal Patarubhyascha, Kripa Sindhubhyevacha, Patitanam Pavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo, Namo Namaha. Hare Krishna. I feel very fortunate and blessed to be in this August assembly. I have darshan of great Vaishnavs and of uh, brown Swiss cows. So I feel, uh, I feel right at home. <laughs> Here in this section of Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Shiva is <clears throat> chanting these beautiful prayers and the Prachetas are benefiting from his uh, elucidation on the Vedic philosophy. Lord Shiva is known <clears throat> as Vaishnavanam Yatakshambhu. He's the greatest of the Vaishnavas and as such he is also a Sampradaya Acharya. He is disseminating the Vedic knowledge through his disciplic succession. So here in this verse he is elaborating on the different components of the creation of the material world and they're all emanating from the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is the only source, the cause of all causes. Tam eka adya purusha. So that is the punchline that Srila Prabhupada in his purport, um, he repeats it twice. So that is the... Uh, the main, the main theme, that everything is originating from Krishna. It's not that this world is separate from him, like so many materialistic philosophers will try to substantiate, they will try to explain that maybe there was a God at the beginning, but now things have gotten out of hand, so things are at a state where it's out of control. And he has no influence over it. In fact, God has become so disgusted with the world that he just left it. He abandoned it and went on to do his business somewhere else. Now, the material world is going on. Uh, in fact, Krishna does not have to personally take uh, initiative to create the world, but through his various energies and potencies, he's creating, maintaining, and destroying the world. We know that Krishna, in his original form, is simply playing and having fun with his eternal associates. He does not have to go to the office. Krishna does not go to the office. Huh? He doesn't have a job. He doesn't have a boss to, to, <clears throat> to report to. In fact, everybody is reporting to him. So the, uh, the three personalities, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, they're, they're in charge of creation, maintenance, and destruction. But Krishna himself personally, he's just engaging in his loving uh, pastimes. Now, someone may question, the same question comes up in the Uddhava Gita, in the 11th canto, Shima Bhagavatam. Then why do the philosophers give all these different types of variations. Sometimes they say there is uh, 24, there is 13, there is seven, there is three, there is one, different components of this world. Why is there so much, uh, 
you could say, discrepancy between their interpretations. It's because the Lord has accommodated all these philosophers' different viewpoints, but ultimately they all coincide, they all converge in the Vedic philosophy of Achintya Beta Beta Tattva, that everything is an emanation from the Lord, <clears throat> thus it is one with Him, so it is simultaneous oneness, but also there is difference. Mm -hmm. There is difference in the sense that the Lord is distinctly separate. He's unique. He's above and beyond all his creation. <clears throat> so to understand this, this Atma Tattva Gyan is essential. It's important for devotees, even though sometimes we may think, oh, why are we discussing this? Uh, it's very technical. Why not just hear pastimes? Because the Acharyas explain that, especially for the conditioned souls who are still attached to this world, it's important to understand the workings of material energy and to appreciate Krishna in his various potencies and his various energies, how he creates, how he maintains, and how he destroys the world. Yesterday, <clears throat> I was watching the sunrise together with Badahari Prabhu in St. Augustine on the beach. And he inspired me to go out there. He said that Srila Prabhupada mentioned that if somebody is still, um, is still attached, it's good for him to, to go and appreciate uh, the Lord's potency in, through nature, like in the sunrise. And in this way, to honor the Lord in his different potencies and to, to, give, to give respect. Because the living entity being bound by the concept of Ahankara of false ego is very easily swayed to fall into the trap of thinking that I'm the controller and I'm the enjoyer. Like this can happen to anybody. We think, well, I may not control the world, but at least I control my little environment or I control my body. Yet, time and time again, we're proved that this is not the case. We have very little control over our surroundings and very little control over our faculties. In fact, there are 33 million demigods who are controlling all the different uh, things that are taking place here in this universe and without their sanction nothing nothing can happen so here in this beautiful purport <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada explains the omnipotence the great qualities of the Lord and at the same time also his great kindness Srila Jiva Goswami on in his purport to the 87th chapter of the 10th canto, Prayers of the Vedas Personified, he says that the reason for this creation is the compassion of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada gives the analogy, the example of the mother who creates a playground, or in this example, a play kitchen, where the children can cook with ingredients that the mother supplies them. I believe the children call it playing house. That's what they call it. Let's play house. Huh? And I'm here with my friend Premananda Gaur Prabhu in Alachua. And uh, a lot of children come every day to play house. Because in his house, there are several smaller houses where children play house. And they do cooking and, and feeding and all the different activities that go on in a house with different dolls. So it's a very popular place. So in a similar way, Krishna, he creates the material world through his potencies to give the living entity a playground. Just like when the parents take their children on vacation and they say, okay, let's go to the beach and you can build some castles of sand. Did you ever uh, build castles of sand when you were young, when you were children? Raise of hands. Just checking. Anybody? Okay. If not, you had a very miserable childhood. And uh, your homework for uh, this summer is you go find a beach and you build some castles of sand. It's a very uh, interesting type of uh, venture mm -hmm. from different perspectives. I'm not going to get into details. But then at some point, the parents say, okay, time to wrap up. 
we got to get home. Uh, so then everything is left. And if you were to come back the next day, you would not find that castle. It would be gone. Uh, and that's exactly what's happening in this world. Krishna has provided us with this playground. He lets us play our games. And then he wraps it all up. It said that the universe is like being wrapped up like you roll up a carpet. Or it is explained that they're like bubbles. The universe is like bubbles that are emanating from Mahavishnu's pores. And with the exhaling and inhaling, they're emanating from his body and again being absorbed into his body. Now that gives us a little glimpse of the time frame, the time scale that Krishna operates on. <laughs> and that Vishnu is just an expansion of his. So <clears throat> now, today's also Srila Ishwara Puripad's uh, appearance day, I believe. Srila Ishwara Puri is the spiritual master of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And a very confidential and dear. Uh, disciple of Srila Madhavendra Puri, who is the first one in our line that uh, that expanded the, the mellow, the mood of conjugal love and of the highest levels of ecstasy. Srila Puri would serve his Gurudev in, in very menial ways. He would uh, tend to his bodily needs. He would clean up his stool and urine when his Gurudev became incapacitated. He would uh, chant songs for him and, and read the Shastra to him so that his Gurudev could fully absorb himself in, in Krishna consciousness. And he was such a confident that his Gurudev bestowed all blessings and all benedictions and potencies on him. One time, Shileshwara Puri went to visit Advaita Charya. And Advaita Charya was worshipping his deity. So Shilishwar Puri, he was not, um, he was very shy. So he just sat nearby and kept quiet. And he was just humbly waiting. And Advaita Charya recognized him by his effulsions, by his great spiritual potency. And they had a wonderful exchange. So when Nimai Pandit then, Sichitani Mahaprabhu, when he went to Gaya, initially he met Ishwara Puri but in Navadvip, where he was visiting holy places and he invited him to his home and fed him uh, prasad. And later on, Sichitani Mahaprabhu went to Gaya and he took initiation from uh, Ishwara Puri. So, and after that, he was a completely changed person. He was totally transformed. He, he would not teach logic anymore. He, he was explaining grammar and rhetoric and arguments and everything according to uh, the holy name of the Lord and Krishna's pastimes. And he just wrapped up his books and told his students, uh, class is dismissed. I cannot teach you anymore. You go find another teacher. And they said, after having a teacher like yourself, how can we, how can we, how can we go and study under anybody else? We're also done with our studies. And so, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not manifest his devotional ecstasies or start the Sankirtan movement before he took initiation from Srila Ishwara Puri. So. That is a very special uh, occasion. In these days also, uh, we're celebrating the appearance day of His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami. Uh, I believe it's a three-day uh, event that is going on. And you're there in Gita Nagari. So I'm sure you're absorbed in this uh, kata, uh, celebrating and honoring the life of his Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami, who also attracted the attention and the mercy of His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktana, the Swami Prabhupada, who was tremendously pleased by his sacrifice, by his devotion, his sincerity, and his 
unique dedication to the Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. So, from these acharyas, from these great personalities, we learn what does it mean to imbibe the teachings and to share them uh, with others. According to time, place, and circumstance, in a way that people feel that the message is relatable, it is relevant, and that it is impactful. We were in uh, New Orleans at the Mardi Gras just a few days ago, and down in the French quarters, it's a, it's a war zone. It's a battlefield. Uh, no need to get into details. We were distributing books there, and I met one artist. There's many artists there around the square who are exhibiting their paintings and their handicrafts. So one artist, he was just setting up. He was pushing his big cart with a lot of effort over the uh, over that uh, what do you call that? Uh, in German, it's Kopfsteinpflaster. It's a uh, it's not a a road that's made out of asphalt, but it's made out of different stones. What do you call that road? Cobblestone. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, and then when he saw me, I started talking to him, and he, he with a big smile on his face, he told me, "Some days, I wish that everybody in this city would play with Krishna." And steal butter with him, and 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 Krishna puts butter in their mouth, and they give Krishna their lunch. And at other times, I'm praying that let the whole city be on the lap of Nishingadev, and rah, he just finishes them all off. And I thought, wow, you know, he he got some ecstasy there. <laughs> He's got some some taste for, 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 for Krishna consciousness. So we had a nice exchange and he chose a few books that he did not yet have. And he appreciated that the devotees are out there consistently uh, spreading the message of Krishna consciousness. Then on the way, while leaving, uh, going back to the car, I, I met one young man who was um, a traveler and he was just heading into the madness so I stopped him and I gave him a few books and at the end he grabbed my hand and, and he shook my hand for very very tightly and he said thank you, thank you this is just what I needed this is just what I needed this is a godsend this is a sign so when we make ourselves available, Krishna reveals to us that he can use us as an instrument in whichever uh, situation, in whichever capacity. Yesterday here, Premananda Gaur Prabhu, he, he uh, is working as a car salesman. So one ex-military person, he bought a, bought a vehicle from him and he invited him to his home. And he came with his family in the evening and took part in the kirtan and took prasadam and got books and shared his life and his his anxiety, his depression, his all the issues that he's going through. And he got solace in the association of Vaishnavas. So I'm on another appreciation tour, just visiting devotees and getting solace in their association and sharing my heart. I'm here with Advaita Charya and Donna Kaley and some money, so many other friends. And we're just remembering the kindness and mercy of Srila Prabhupada and all our spiritual masters that have impacted our lives and changed us forever. Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful to see uh, that the um, preaching and the sharing of Krishna consciousness is going on very strongly there in Ditanagari Dham, which is a holy place. And I cannot thank all of you enough for, for putting in. Uh, that effort, that sacrifice, I know it's cold there right now. I can see it from the breathing of the cows in the barn. Uh, and 
we cannot honor and appreciate the devotees and the devotees' efforts enough. Right now, we're in a crucial phase of this movement where the first generation is rapidly passing on. Yet, sometimes we can see that because of a lack of appreciation and a lack of care, people may feel insecure. People may feel entitled or territorial because they may feel that if I don't hold on to whatever little I've got, then I will be left out on the curb, uh, sitting alone in the cold. So it is our privilege, not just our sacred duty, but our privilege to honor and appreciate all the devotees and to serve them and to make them feel loved and, and appreciated and wanted. And in this way, we will have a generation of elders who are there not as uh, managers, as businessmen, as lawmakers and politicians, but as elders, as sages, as wise, as wise uh, people who can share their wisdom, their realizations, their ecstasy, and their struggles with the coming uh, with the up and coming generations and in this way we'll have a wholesome uh, a sustainable community of devotees so as we can see like chaitanya mahaprabhu got that love and affection from shila ishwara puri uh, it was not a a convenience relationship it was not, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. It was not a business arrangement. It was a relationship of the heart that was based on love and trust, on uh, spiritual instructions. And in this way, it was real. It was authentic. That is what people want to experience when they come to the Krishna conscious movement. Otherwise, if they feel that they are simply coming to some other establishment, it becomes Bhakti Inc., Bhakti Incorporated, uh, with uh, limited liability. <laughs> liability is a big word. What would you rather be seen and treated as? As an asset or as a liability? Who, who likes to be seen as a liability? Raise of hands. Not even the cows are raising their, uh, their tails. Uh, we all want to be seen and treated as an asset. Huh? Yet, without having that feeling of, uh, or that culture of appreciation, it's very difficult to be seen as an asset if one is treated more like a liability. So, these are very interesting times that we're living in. There's a lot of turmoil in the world, of course, that has been there since 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 it started since the creation there has been a lot of turmoil yet even more so now things are becoming more and more aggravated and it is important that we do not get sucked into this type of uh, dichotomy of these false arguments uh, between this party and that party but that we focus on our real business which is to practice and share krishna consciousness with the world. That is our birthright. That is our mission. That is what Srila Prabhupada uh, came to give us. That is what he shared with us. That's why he stayed up all night to translate these books and to start these communities. And, and when people ask him sometimes in India, how could you do this? Uh, how, could you, how could you initiate Mlechas and Yavanas? How, could you, how, how, how dare you do this? Shira Prophet said, I had to take all the help I could get. I did not refuse anybody. And people were amazed that he was ready to, to take that risk and to take that responsibility to just deal with anybody who Krishna sent his way. So for me personally, it's a struggle because I have an analytical mind. I'm very critical. Uh, which helps for some things, but is not so helpful for others. So, and it is interesting to see how Krishna proves us wrong mm -hmm. time and time again. You never know 
who's going to take a book. You never know who's going to, who's going to, who's going to make it. You never know who's going to stick to, <laughs> to the practice. It's quite, it's quite a, it's quite a mystery. So Krishna has his way to keep us on our toes. So I'm very grateful for your association and your prayers. It's been uh, an interesting journey through many deserts. And without the mercy of the Vaishnavas, as Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami says, that I'm lame and blind, and without the stick of the mercy of the Vaishnavas, I cannot, I cannot move and do anything. So thank you for thinking of me favorably and keeping me in your prayers. We have time for some questions or comments or discussion. Well, it's still fresh uh, in my mind what you're saying about appreciation of Vaishnavas. Um, I think Krishna can handle praise like you see the Vedas personified and everybody else, the Lord Shiva, as we have in the, in the Bhagavatam, offering prayers to, to Krishna, to Vishnu. And because Krishna doesn't, doesn't really have false ego, he can, he can manage it fine. I, matter of fact, I concluded that the, the only person really without any ego at all is Krishna because he expanded, he created Srimati Radharani, who is better than him. If anybody has an ego, he will never go for something like that. He will always make someone that is not as good as you. But Krishna just went beyond that. So when I travel through, through the festivals, Baltic and Ukrainian and so on, I got undeserved praise. The word is just, just for the fact of me being able to speak English. I was already on the level of the demigods. What to speak of if I did kirtan or gave classes, they thought I was some, somewhat of an incarnation and treated me like with so much respect and veneration. And it was, perhaps this is what I was always wanted. I wanted to be appreciated and honor, respect and so on. But when I got it, it was very uncomfortable. It was very hard to deal with. So I'm sure you have gotten accolades as you know the super book distributor that you are and the preacher that you are and a good devotee. So how how do we deal with these things when we get just a little bit of praise and we it goes to our heads? So is there a way to handle that we is our is our duty to appreciate Vaishnavas and but when it happens to us how do we deal with that thank you Sarama Prabhu to bring up this point the the proper way how to deal with it is to pass it up through the parampara that that we are offering it because we know we're here by the mercy of the Vaishnavas. We are here. We're, we're made of the mercy of our gurus. So we, whenever we get praise, it's like the viceroy or the tax collector. We're just out there collecting tax. So we're getting donations. We're getting appreciation. We may get praise. But it's not really for us. <laughs> but we're just the representative of, of, of the parampara. So if the guru thinks, oh, yeah, this is, uh, I deserve this, you know. In fact, it, it was a little light. It was a little, uh, it, <laughs> it was not substantial enough, you know. <laughs> then he's really in trouble because we will never get what we, what we expect, what we wish for. Mm -hmm. So one thing is to pass it up through parampara. And another thing is to always remember where we came from and another good thing is when you like when you distribute books i mean nobody on the street knows who you are like if you tell people uh, you don't, don't you know who i am you know like it, it does not really create much of a rapport <laughs> with a person 
has anybody ever told you you don't you know who I am you know like it's just it's just a joke right it's just so the world has ways to disappoint us that is supposed the way of the world so when we go out and we perform this service of sharing Krishna consciousness and we 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 accept that there will be rejection, indifference, uh, criticism, even attacks uh, and setbacks. That is to be expected. Just like when the coward boys went and asked the Brahmins and they did not even get any, any form of reply or response from them. <laughs> they went back to Krishna. And, and, and Krishna said, uh, when you go begging, that is to be expected. <laughs> so, so don't don't get worked up about it. Just try again. Go go to their wives and and let's see how that works. And it is a tougher service to accept service than to give service. We've all had the experience of people seeing us and treating us uh, as something special, and it is 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 tough. It's a tough. It's a tough, uh, it's a tough service to accept service on behalf of, of the parampara, mm. without getting proud, without getting uh, negligent, without getting demanding, and to keep that that proper Vaishnava humility. So Krishna is testing us by giving us different experiences, and sometimes the two extremes collide they come together and it's such a <laughs> it's just blowing the mind uh, and krishna does that in order to show to us that praise or 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 indifference or insult in this world are really not that important or that meaningful we are something quite different from all of that yet as a service to the devotees and as a service to the public we may be put in a position where we have to uh, receive uh, contributions or, or praise or respect. It's important that, as Prophet said, if the bank teller takes one cent, he, he'll go to prison, he'll lose his job because he will be seen as, as not trustworthy. So I, do, I, do I get off on this uh, or do I take this in the proper way and, and, and offer it where, where it actually belongs? Hmm. we got to stay clean stay transparent otherwise whatever comes at you it will stick you'll get you'll get beaten and 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 ground up <laughs> in no time because there's a lot coming your way uh, it's it's a it's a tough it's a tough service i don't know if this helps well the last thing you said um you get beaten you get ground up Sometimes we don't see this. Uh, we see that people abuse their position, their power, their influence, and they just stay there. They continue to, uh, perhaps they're not introspective enough to, to realize. Uh, yeah, but it's only a short time. It's not, it's not really a long time. And, and what, is, what is a short time? We only live for 100 years of le or less. If someone lasts... 10 years, that's 10% that's of our lives. That's a long time. Yeah, it may seem like it's forever. Uh, what gives me solace, like this story of the dog who was receiving uh, rocks from, from some Brahmin, and then he went to complain to Lord Ram. And he, I'm sure you know that story, so I'll make it brief. Then Ram called both of them, the dog and the, and the Brahmin, and heard their heard their uh, presentation and a Brahmin had his thing uh, to go to the temple and I got to do my puja I got to do my worship there's this dog I threw the rock to get him out of the way and the dog said this was not necessary I, I was not really obstructing and, and why did I deserve this rock you know so Ram he said okay uh, so to the dog what, what would you like what should be the fit punishment for this Brahmin and 
And the Brahmin said uh, he should become in charge of the temple. He should become the, the Mahant. He should become the guru of, of, of the Mat. And then some people ask, well, isn't that, isn't that a benediction? <laughs> <Rather> than, <laughs> huh? And then the dog said, no, uh, I was the Mahant in my last life. Huh? So, time is a, is a very interesting phenomenon. And my spiritual master asked me to go to San Francisco to open a, a preaching center. I asked him why. He said, uh, you will learn patience. And I said, what do you mean, patience? <laughs> <laughs> and now six years later, I get a glimpse, I get a little bit of an understanding of why he said what he said, because my perception of patience and time is different from Krishna's perception. Like Krishna said, I'll be back. Now, how long? That's, that's, in, his, that's in his call. But I realized that the more I cooperate with Krishna's plan, the more time can shrink or expand according to Krishna's, Krishna's desire. Mm -hmm. So I'm not in a position to judge. As I've mentioned earlier on in the talk, that a lot of people in our institution are holding on to power and position because we have failed to, to institute uh, systems of accountability, assessment, and succession, and having the right person in the right place, uh, because we are a very young movement. Now, of course, that doesn't help us if I tell you that everything will be better. We'll laugh about all of this in a hundred years from now, right? That 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 lightens you up, doesn't it? Uh, not not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, waiting for people to die is also not the greatest prospect in life because it may not really work out with, <laughs> with anyone's timeline. So, so what's the solution? You tell me. Um, it's, it's your turn on the soapbox. I wouldn't dare. <laughs> I have seen that when we when we are trying to do our level best Krishna has a way of 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 responding he has a way of of arranging things just to give you a small example one time I was in Mayapur and I really felt terrible because things were not going great and I felt like I was being crushed. So I was just walking by the, the conch building. And my spiritual master just came down from the, from the meetings. And he saw me. And he called me over and he said, Navina, uh, are you still cooking? And I lied. I said, yes. And he said, can I come for lunch today? And I said, yes and then he said can you cook italian i said yes he said can i bring the brahmacharis i said yes so he came with eight uh, brahmacharis and served him a great feast and the devotees were very happy enjoying krishna prasadam and i saw how that moment of despair and, and, and anxiety and almost depression attracted. Uh, it brought about a certain level of desperation that attracted mercy. So when people ask me, what's the secret? How do you distribute so many books? I could say, well, you do this, you do that. You know, it's this component, that component. But there's a certain component of desperation that that we have all experienced. Anybody who has ever done this <laughs> has experienced it. When, when you're really desperate, it attracts a certain kind of mercy that is just unprecedented. It's just very overwhelming and empowering. Now, I don't know if that helps, but 
And another time I was walking in Puri on the beach road and it was after a Yatra and the, the car drove by and stopped and, and the window went down and my spiritual master looked out and he called me over and he said, would you like to join me for, for, this was after the Yatra was over. This Yatra had thousands and thousands of devotees. We went to holy places. We heard Kata. And the Yatra was over. Everybody was already home, going home. So he said, would you like to visit holy places with me? So I got in the car and we drove to Tota Gopinath and to Sita Bakul and went to Gambira. And the Pujari, the Mahant there, he he saw Maharaj and, and he, he got us to go into the real Gambira. It's not the room above. It's actually a room below the earth. It's below the ground where Mahaprabhu would do his bhajan. So we went down into that cave and, and sat there for 40 minutes chanting Japa in that, in that place where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was chanting Hare Krishna and experiencing intense uh, intense ecstasy for the Lord. And for me, because I'm not on that level, I, I felt claustrophobic and I felt uh, quite some anxiety because it was dark. It was humid, damp, and, and very, very tight room. And there's four of us down in that very, very small space. So afterwards, when we were out, he, he, he asked me, what was my experience? And I said, it was wonderful. He said, no, it was not wonderful. He said, it was the ultimate. So I could see how I'm not there yet, but I, I, I can appreciate. I have a glimpse of these, um, of these experiences by, by the mercy of the devotees that are bestowing kindness upon me. So patience, Krishna has a plan and he, he will empower us to, to do our bit, to do our part. But what that part will be, that is revealed according to the level of surrender. And right now I'm not very surrendered, so I can just barely see breakfast from where I am right now. But I see the sun rising, so it's it's a good day. I know Krishna is kind, and and the Vaishnavas are are very merciful. So I'm I am hopeful. I'm I'm hopeful. As far as the bigger picture goes, the institution, uh, the country, the world, it is all way way beyond my my capacity. I can simply try to create some. Uh, authentic practice in my own life and try to share my experiences with, with the people that I interact with and try to be a resource, try to be a support to the people who look uh, for that. That is, my, that is my two cents. What are your realizations? I have none, but I'm I'm sure Dasya Prema, who is asking, going to ask something, may may contribute. But I I do accept your answer as a very appropriate one. Dasya Prema Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, I don't know where you went. Okay. Anyways. Okay. I'm, I'm just wondering on this idea of there. Okay. This idea of uh, guidance, which is so important in our bhakti process, um, yeah, how to like develop more trust, um, because you know we might have trust in our guru, but uh, he, you know, he's not always so accessible. And at least my tendency is like, okay, this devotee, he, you know, he he is more advanced to me, more experienced. <clears throat> Um, and I like what he says about this, but maybe, you know, he's a little too, 
uh, conservative in this area or too liberal in this area or too fanatical about this. So, yeah, I don't know. There's some weird, like, if they're not, like, the perfect pers person, at least to fit my conception of what is perfect, uh, there's just, like, this resistance to uh, to really take guidance. So can you... Yeah, you were saying that the desperation. I, I'm I'm hoping to attract some of your mercy by my desperation. Well, it's good to see you there with all the dedication and sincerity that you have shown over the years. Um, sometimes, as I've mentioned our tendencies to be critical and analytical may work against us. Like, as you mentioned, we may start to categorize and, and the mind is a rascal and is trying to find excuses. So every devotee has got mercy. Everybody can give you uh, mercy. And even every person that you meet can give you a piece of the puzzle that, 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 that will make things more clear. Yet if I shut myself off and I say that I will only answer to God and maybe Guru, because that's our process, then I'm at best the Kanishta Adhikari. And Kanishta Adhikaris are neophytes, they're beginners. So they have a real hard time interacting with others. They have a real hard time figuring out what's going on because it's just, me and God, or me and the deity, and yeah, okay, my guru is also there, but he's not really that accessible, so I guess it's just me against the rest of the of the galaxy, and that's not a fight that you can win. Uh, so, to to develop loving and trusting relationships with with devotees is is a it's indispensable. We can't do without that. Otherwise, if I don't do that, how can how can I, how can I truly say that I want to go back to the spiritual world? Because there, that's all there is. It's Krishna and his devotees, and 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 if I don't love them and if I don't trust them, why would I want to be with them? Why would I want to hang out with them? Right? I don't want to be with people that I don't love and that I don't trust. So if I don't learn how to do this here, then then why would I even want to go there? Because that's all there is there. So to get over that Kanishta Adhikari mentality, there's a process for that. It's called Harinam Sankirtan, that, that we, we go out together and we share the holy name and the books and the prasadam and the teachings with one and all. And we start realizing, we start seeing, oh, okay, this person, all right, I may not like the way how he, how he, you know, eats his doll, but, but this person is really, is really dedicated. This person is really sincere. This person is really doing their level best. And it's inspiring to me to see that. And it's amazing that when we appreciate other devotees, our own appreciation increases. Just like yesterday, we were in San Augustine. And Donna Kaley Prabhu is an old friend from Dallas. He, he's with me now in the van. We're traveling. Uh, we're bringing the band back together. So, and he, I saw him going out and just talking to people. He just walked up to the first person and, and gave him books. And, and I was just appreciating the, the enthusiasm and the, the focus that he was displaying, that I could snap out of whatever mental snags that were going on just by observing his dedication. So we have to seek out, we have to seek out other devotees and take, take their association and take their guidance. Because not everybody is so forthcoming that they will just intrude into your life and, and, uh, and tell you what you don't want to hear. Of course, we have experience of persons like that. And we, we may or may not like it. But if we have the right attitude, as I said earlier, everybody can give you mercy and everybody can give you a piece of the puzzle. Yet we should, we should 
we should seek it out. We should be mercy hounds. We should be desperate for that mercy. Otherwise, if I think I'm fine, I've got it figured out. I'm, I'm okay. In fact, everyone else is a nuisance. Then that puts me in a very precarious, in a very dangerous position. I become very vulnerable. Maya really zones in. Uh, she really takes attention to a person who has got that type of attitude. So, some have more outgoing natures. Some may, may, may knock on your door on a regular basis. Yet, a relationship has to be reciprocal. Like in previous years, when I came here to the great country, I was really astounded by how impersonal and how, uh, yeah, how aloof the whole thing is with answering machines and, and just very disjointed huh? so but i persisted and i kept knocking on people's doors and virtual doors and and calling them and leaving messages and trying to meet them now at the current state i'm kind of more let the game come to me you know whatever comes i'll deal with it but i'm not putting so much out there as far as uh, the Vodi community goes but when you live in a close-knit community, in, in close space, it's very important that, that we have tight relationships. And we, of course, we have people who we're very close with and others who may be acquaintances and others are more formal because people have different natures. But we should not allow ourselves to have some sort of critical mindset or animosity or even maliciousness come up in our heart because it will ruin our bhajan, it will ruin our bhakti, it will go contrary to our devotional practice. So we should have a no procrastination policy that we don't let anything build up. We don't let anything accumulate and then we'll get out of hand. So if you find that something is not to the level of where it should be, then please make an effort and, and deal with it to set things straight. Thank you for your honesty. All right. I miss you and I'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Nice, nice to, yeah. The, the, uh, nice to see you in the van. This is the, uh, I wouldn't want to see you any other way. This is the. Well, I can, I can just put the van backdrop, you know, and, and you don't see that I'm actually in the jacuzzi, you know, I'm actually, I'm actually yeah. living it up, you know, but no, this is a home sweet home, you know, it works. So yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate. What is your normal schedule? You go till eight or you have a cutoff time or what is the normal? I know today's Dvodasi and people have been fasting doing nirjal and all kinds of vratas we usually uh we usually leave it at the discretion of the speaker I and mean, there is a uh, one of the little squares that you may see it says temple room uh if someone is there they will put the computer they will turn the video on and we will see the greening of the deities or guru puja which takes place Depends if the pujaris are a little late, dressing the deities will go past eight o'clock. There will be Guru Puja first, but usually greeting of the deities goes at eight o'clock. But uh, if a class is sought after and interesting enough and there is demand for it, we, we continue until, until the, we basically uh, milk the speaker dry. Okay, well, I didn't want to do disservice in the name of doing service because it's very easy to do that also. <laughs> you can see Radha Damodar right now as it's on the screen. So the oh, yes. curtains open. Jai um, Radha Damodar. Is there, is there anyone else that would like to ask a question or share a realization or a comment or reflection? Or perhaps, Naveen, you have some more that you didn't share yet. But let's let's hear from Queenie first, and 
Go ahead. Hare Krishna, Navina Prabhu. It's nice to see you again. Um, you may, I mean, yeah, I was with Mongwadi in Philadelphia when you came for the preaching center at Mantra Laos, but now I'm here in Gitanagri. So um, I really appreciate your class and just seeing your community and appreciation as always, really inspiring. So thank you very much. Um, I have a question because when when you answer um, Dasar Prabhu question, you mentioned about Harinam Sankirtan. We do Harinam Sankirtan with each other as a way to be a relationship, but here at the scene of a farm, um, do you, what do you think of some of the ways that we may be able to do? Because we may not have the capacity to go on Harinam Sankirtan very often. So is there another way or um, to go about it? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you can meet in the temple or in different homes and have regular uh, kirtan gatherings. Like last night, there, there was not an official program, but just like maybe 15 or 20 people showed up <laughs> and and we had kirtan and we had discussion, Krishna Kata, and we had prasad. And it was it was it was sincere. It was authentic. There was no there was no big schedule, there was no big speakers, there was no, but it was, it was honest and people felt it, it was palpable. So that can happen wherever you are. There's no, oh, I'm in this place, so here we can't do this. But the components of Krishna consciousness are always available. If we want to do it, we can get together with devotees and hear and chant on a daily basis. Especially if you're in a farm project where there's a lot of hard work and a lot of uh, sacrifice required. So we need that to get together and to really absorb ourselves in the hearing and chanting. And then when the weather is a little better, we can also venture out. And there's plenty of towns and schools in your area where on a weekly basis one can uh, share the chanting and the message but the goal is also to then invite people to our projects and to share the lifestyle and the practice with them so that's but now there's a lot of people who are doing readings uh, and classes over zoom which is nice it's a good substitute but it doesn't take away from from the in-person experience because uh, the technology is a bit flat. Even if we are to go into the uh, metaverse, it will still be a bit uh, flat. It will still be a substitute <laughs> to actual interaction and meeting. But in, in times such as this, we are taking advantage of this opportunity. Yet we should always have this hankering that, that I'm in, I'm in separation from from my Lord and from my from my dear friends, and that will create a a mood of longing, a mood of yearning, a mood of uh, intense need, which will attract Krishna's attention, because Krishna is very responsive. Srila Prabhupada writes in the Chaitanya Charitamrita in different places. Krishna is responsive, and Krishna is very responsive. So, when when we have that intense need and desire Krishna will respond but as long as I think I'm good I got it figured out because I have you know I have my supplies and and I'm I'm doing fine I got gas in the tank I can lean out my elbow and I can now coast along then Krishna says okay you're fine I'm fine so everybody's cool <laughs> life goes on as unless I realize that the, like the late Suradas Prabhu was saying in his purport to the song, Krishna, 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 hey, what is the translation? It, he said, it means Krishna, help. Krishna, 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 help. Huh? I need help. Otherwise, it's very difficult to, to receive unless there is a feeling of need. 
and that requires a little bit of humility and introspection to to see that i am not i'm not okay i i need help that's why i'm here any other questions or comments Hare Krishna Prabhu, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to say thank you first of all for such a wonderful class and a lot of examples. I live in the Inagri community. My name is Ajamil Das. Nice to meet you. Um, you were speaking, if you could just talk a little bit about um, this playground that we're in and how we can relish Lord Krishna in this playground. You were talking about how we can relish in his material energy. Could you speak about that a little bit more? Thank you, Ajamil Prabhu. Just to, as a segue from the last question, uh, I'll give you a little personal anecdote, if you don't mind. Um, His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami called me into his room and uh, and he elucidated a few points to me and he asked me to do something that I didn't do because I was, uh, I was too adamant in my ways. I was too convinced that I had it figured out. What I wanted to do was right and I would not hear his reasoning with an open heart, meaning with the intention to actually follow it. And thus, uh, I suffered severely. And so if I truly want to experience Krishna's mercy, then I have to be willing to validate and to appreciate that mercy in whichever way it comes. Sometimes we say, yeah, if Krishna comes and he, you know, he'll play the flute, like Prabhupada gave the example, you know, and Indian would say, yeah, you know, I saw Krishna dancing, you know, because that's their desire. They want to see Krishna dance. Well, we can't tell Krishna, hey, you got to dance for me or, you know, you got to do this or you got to do that. Who am I to say that, you know? So if I don't appreciate Krishna's potency, even in the Virat Rupa, in, 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 in his creation, then how much will I be able to appreciate Krishna in his personal form? You know, there's a lot of people who saw Krishna when he was here 5,000 years ago. Yet out of these millions of people, very few, only a handful, could actually appreciate him as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Very few could, could actually figure out who he was. Same with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm? <laughs> so, that really requires uh, a deliberate effort. And, and if we have that appreciation capacity then we can recognize krishna when he manifests himself even through uh, odd circumstances and through uh, strange people just like one time i was in uzbekistan in tashkent and we were in a in a in a mosque and it was actually a tomb of a sufi saint and me and a friend, we, we went there to not just see the architecture, but, but to, to pay our respects and, and get, the, get the blessings, get the benefit of this holy place. So, so we were there in plain clothes because it's a communist country and, and it's uh, Muslim. And so there was one person who was praying at that shrine. And when he finished his prayers, we were just chanting and looking at things and just absorbing the atmosphere. He came over to us and he, he told us, I know you're devotees of Krishna and you're sincere because you're chanting Allah's names. So today is a very fortunate day because today Allah has brought you to this tomb. I was just praying to, to the saint that may all your spiritual desires be fulfilled. And I would like to invite you to my home to share a meal with me and my family. And I thought, wow, this guy has got it. <laughs> he's in the zone. He, he's got devotion. And sometimes you come to temple of your own 
church, your own institution, and people look at you like, are you supposed to be here? You know, like, what do you want? And, or just not, or there may just be nobody. It may just be closed doors, locked, no entry. And you may feel like, do I need an invitation to come to the house of, of my father, to come to the house of the Lord? No, certainly not, right? So, I don't know if that answers your question. I'm just trying to illustrate that Krishna's uh, kindness and his mercy is all pervasive. And we're made by the, by the sacrifice and, and dedication and surrender of, of all the generations of devotees who have given their lives to, to bring us to, to where we are now. I remember uh, when I was a young devotee, Rohini Sutta Prabhu was my uh, Sankirtan leader. And I don't know how many of you know him <laughs> besides Sarvatma Prabhu. Uh, he, we, called him, we called him Bhishma Dev because he was like Grandfather Bhishma. He was very uh, dedicated yet very loving. And he, he bought us our clothes. He bought me my first watch. I was 15. He said, you need a watch. Otherwise, you don't know when is the time to, 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 to meet up. And one time uh, before the marathon, I got sick because I ate, I must have ate at least eight persimmons, you know, like, <laughs> and it's, it was just the last few days of November and I got a severe cold and, and it was, the cold wasn't so bad. What was bad was that on the next Monday, the marathon was starting and, and I had a cold and I could not go out. And, and in those days, as Sarama Prabhu was mentioning, the competition between me and Hari Namananda was so fierce. It was so tight. I mean, he was number one for eight years. I only, I only allowed to be number one one time in 91. Uh, then he was number two. <laughs> but, and it's not because I did more. It's because he did less that year. So, so I had a cold and I was really in despair. And I was really desperate. What, what can I do to get better? And Rohini Suda Prabhu said, uh, you know, I read in the Bhagavatam, in the fifth canto, it says that if a healthy person gargles with water, then, then, then that can actually bring down the fever of another person. So I laid there in my copens and he was gargling with water and spitting it all over me. And, uh, and <laughs> it was a big mess. And we were all laughing. And, and my fever was gone. The next day I was out on the marathon. So I can personally say I'm here because I'm, I'm, I'm made of the mercy of the devotees. Otherwise, this, this, this body would not be here. This person would not be here. So that level of desperation and also faith, trust that everybody can give me something. It's not just, oh, only my guru can. And, and even he really won't because he knows that I'm quite mature and advanced. So he won't upset me by chastising me or telling me things I don't want to hear. But every devotee can give me something. Then Krishna will reveal himself. Krishna will manifest himself and, and give us his darshan. And that is, that is very precious. So the idea that, that, that the deity has to talk to me or the garland has to fall or uh, the miracle has to happen. There's miracles every single day. That I'm here is a miracle because, because a lot of things could have gone quite differently. So thank you for asking. Hare Krishna. Jai. Hare Krishna, thank you. Thank you for your answer. Hare Bhav. I'd like to appreciate <clears throat> Sarvatma Prabhu and Divya who, who have uh, been very lenient with me and very kind and caring over not just the years but over the decades even though we have been in mostly different places 
but I can honestly say that to know that I have uh, seniors who are affectionate and who care about me and who want me to flourish and succeed has been a, a great uh, stimulus in my, in my spiritual life. My spiritual master once told me, uh, we were in, in Puri on the beach behind the festival kitchen when he told me also about San Francisco. Uh, and why I should work with Vaisheshika Prabhu. He said, you'd rather be in a place where there is no facility, but somebody wants you to succeed and flourish than to be in a place where there's a lot of facility, but people want you to fail, uh, to prove that they were right, that you're incapable. So, and I feel that affection. I feel that care. And also that uh, discerning serious uh, sometimes sarcastic, sometimes challenging, or sometimes chastising, uh, which is very good. It is edifying. It is like a tonic. If we can only accept praise and sugar, then we will grow up very weak. We will not be very strong in our Krishna consciousness. So, as I've mentioned, I only met His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami Maharaj on, on a few occasions, yet. Um, yeah, I, I was very much, uh, sorry to not have been able to follow his instruction and it costed me dearly. Yet I, I could see that he was very kind and also lenient that he did not rub it in because he could see what my, what my state was. So he he let it he let it slide because he saw I was not up for the task. So some things may take longer. Some things may take longer. But I do remember very vividly that class he gave in Mayapur where he jumped up on the Vyasa Sun and threw his hat in the air and started screaming and yelling at everybody. If you want to watch it, it's there on YouTube. <laughs> I'm sure you know which class I'm talking about. <laughs> and he just put the whole house on fire. And everybody was thinking like, what happened to the Swami? What just, what just, what just transpired? Mm -hmm. So every devotee can give, us, can give us nectar because Krishna is in every living entity's heart, but especially in the hearts of his devotees who, who are, calling out to him and who are practicing and he's revealing his, his plan through the devotees. So I'm yet learning to appreciate Krishna's plan while I'm here in the desert of, or in the swamp of Florida and looking for, looking for guidance. Thank you, Navina Prabhu for honoring us and enlightening us with, the, with your talk and your kind instruction mixed with affection. Uh, we would like now to, for the devotees to unmute yourselves and give your acknowledgement, appreciation and gratitude towards Navina Prabhu and we'll end this session Again, thank you for uh, speaking to us. Uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Prabhu, please. Uh, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you all. I miss you all. I hope to see you. As, as soon as the snow and the ice is gone, as, as soon as uh, the snowman has melted, uh, I will. I will certainly. I will certainly uh, come by. Krishna willing. <laughs> so for um, for the devotees following this this thread and uh, uh, the future lectures on Tuesday on Shiva Ratri, uh, we will have Mukunda Goswami from uh, directly from Australia. So see you then. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Navina Prabhu. Hare Krishna, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, all glories to Prabhupada. Thank you very much.